started. Recording in progress. Yay. Cool. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Andrew J. Stillman with Pride.com. I am joined today by none other than Scott Hoying of the Pentatonics. I'm so excited to see you. Hi, Scott. Hi, how are you? I'm doing so good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. Thank you for taking some time out of your very crazy schedule to um, come and talk to me. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of that because you've got a lot of exciting things happening in your personal life, professional life, all sorts of things. So um, starting actually with you, you do have some congratulations in order, both Thank for you. getting married and for releasing your first solo EP, Parallel. Um, so how's life as a freshly newlywed man now that the planning and the honeymoon and the dust has kind of settled a little bit? Life is amazing. Thank you, by the way. Life is cool. It feels like so many new chapters are starting. Um, it's so cool to be a husband and to have married the man of my dreams. And then it's also, it's been a really big moment for me being able to release an EP because it's, it's, uh, I've always been so scared to do that. And now to be able to, for this EP to be a love letter to Mark, my husband, it just feels like everything lined up so perfectly. And I'm just so happy the wedding went so beautifully and, and Mark and I have just been on cloud nine and it's it's really exciting time for sure. That's cool. Um, I have to admit, I am a black pink stan. So I saw that little uh, how you like that dance. I was here. I'm, for it. <laughs> okay, so you're, a, you're a man of taste. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, remind me how you and Mark, um, how you met. So Mark and I met, you know, it's actually kind of a crazy story. I was shooting a video for a cover of a match that Pentasonics was doing. Um, that day, which happens to be the video that I like officially came out to the public. So it's kind of a really kismet moment. And after the shoot wrapped early for like the first time ever. And so on the way home from the shoot, I was like, I actually have time to stop by my friend's birthday party. So we stopped at a, I stopped at a birthday party and I saw Mark and was just like drawn to him. And we talked for a long time that night. Um, and I was just infatuated. And then we hung out more and more and fell in love pretty quickly. Oh, I love that. And here you are, married and, we are married and happy. And now with a full, full solo um, EP about uh, Mark. So let's talk a little bit about that with Parallel. Um, what was it like to, I mean, be in the studio kind of by yourself? You know what I mean? Obviously, you're part of the Pentatonics and usually you guys are a cappella. So, I mean, what was it like working, I mean, with full orchestra and alone and I mean, all of that? Tell me a bit about that experience. It was, it's just such, it's such a different form of artistry and like both are beautiful in their own ways, but it was so cool to, it's such a, it was such a unique experience for me to be able to like come up with an idea and be able to just lean into it because we all have, in Pentatonics have five different musical tastes. And I think what makes it special is how they all come together and we meet on this common ground, but it was nice and, and really um, exciting to be able to just write the most personal stories that come from like just me and be able to create them in a way that and 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 follow a vision that that was like super super viscerally me um so that was just so amazing and also i like during the pandemic started to learn how to use pro tools which i had been putting off for a long time and i became so obsessed with producing and songwriting and having the ability and the power to like have an idea for a song or an arrangement and create it and have a demo hours later was just so fascinating and amazing to me so I started writing a song every single night which did so much for me as a person it like built self-esteem it gave me kind of like this flow state that I found really energizing and then it also just like gave me this collection of songs that brought me to tears and that just felt so powerful to create so I it, it felt like time the perfect time for me to put out the CP um and I'm just so proud of it. And I, I think that's what's so exciting. And what, I was afraid to release it, any type of solo stuff before, because I would, I know that I would have compared it to Pentatonic success and and wondered um, if it was good enough. But now I'm so proud of it and how it came out that I can go to bed at night feeling really good about it. So like the success of it doesn't feel as important to me. And then ironically, I think when you have that type of mindset about something, that's when it does better because it's coming from an authentic place. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Well, you should be proud of it because oh, it's very well done. Um, but I mean, in line with Pentatonix, you have also had quite an exciting year um, as a group as well. Um, you were unmasked on The Masked Singer, which was very exciting. Um, you received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is a long way away from where you started on the sing-off. <laughs> and you're only a few days away from launching a tour. So um, talk to me about some of that. I mean, that is all some pretty milestone <laughs> landmark <Yeah. laughs> events. It's just so wild because we've been a band for 12 years. And I always think like we've been so blessed to do so many incredible things that I'm just like, how are we going to top this? And then like the walk of fame happens. And that was just like such a whirlwind experience, just the event itself even. And to be on the most iconic thing in Los Angeles, like when I first came to LA when I was 12, that's the first place I went was the walk of fame. And I just saw this picture on Instagram of, uh, Mark and I guess my two now nieces and nephews um like taking a picture with it and it was just making me think about how like my children and children's children and children's children will go look at that it's it's just it's so cool so that was a special moment and then being on the mass singer was a dream come true I have literally been campaigning and asking everyone that works on our team agents everything to be on that show for years I yeah. think it's so fun and I just wanted to feel the experience of like being being able to sing and perform and not and anonymously and it was exactly what I thought it'd be it was so cool I um, love that you say anonymous because yeah, yeah it was so obvious <laughs> <laughs> we knew we knew we we're over here watching you at home we knew from from day one I, yeah. my boy I, know, I, just like, I know that's Scott Hoying there's no way that that's not Scott singing it's so funny but, it's like yeah. for paparazzi I like really did try to mask my voice I was like I'm your biggest fan <laughs> and people still know but honestly it made me feel good that people can like recognize my voice that quickly but it was so cool to like I wasn't near as nervous. I get nervous for TV stuff. That's like where my stage fright really hits. But like, I felt so cozy in my little sushi box. And I was just like, I was just like, yeah, I felt so free in there. And I, I it was also so fun to do a competition show again, because that's how we started and be able to get creative and like flip songs on their head. Like, like I feel like we went back to really Pentatonix's roots and it, it was uh, very enlightening for us in multiple ways. One that like we crush it at covers. And I think that also it showed that we can have production and guitar and, and like, it doesn't have to be acapella for it to still feel like Pentatonix and special. So it was a really big, it was a really big thing for us. I love that. We were actually supposed to go see a taping yesterday, but then the taping got pushed back like three hours. And then the dog sitter that we had was like, it's too late, blah, blah, blah. So we actually oh, no. don't get to go. But one day, that's that's my goal is to be in the audience. And oh my gosh. I wish you take it off. <laughs> the audience for ours, you could have voted for us because um, we got outvoted by the audience and, and didn't make it to the finale. And I'm so Which sad. Lane, you should have definitely. Oh my, like, thank you. you guys versus Bishop Briggs would have been such a freaking showdown i would have loved oh that. my gosh a vocal yeah i i wish we would have especially because i had just arranged our finale songs which were out of the woods by taylor swift and always remembers this way by gaga from stars born and i literally was so excited to perform those they were they were like really strong and i think we should just release them anyways um wow. but that was the most heartbreaking part was just having to put those arrangements in a folder yeah um i mean you have a greatest hits album coming out soon, do you not? I mean, maybe we'll see it on there. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean the great. Well, it's that's Christmas stuff, but we've put on Christmas stuff on Christmas albums before, so <laughs> maybe we could. I mean, I did kind of actually have a question a little bit about. Um, I mean, seeing the Pentatonics have those kinds of actual musical arrangements when you were on the Mass Singer, and obviously, you know, we all know that you are predominantly the acapella but do you think that that would be something that we'd ever see in future um, albums from you then maybe to dabble around a little bit with that 
I'm also yeah, so sorry that the trash man just decided that this was no, this happens to me every time I get on Zoom. He comes like, here at seven o'clock every morning, and here it is two fifteen in the afternoon. I'm in the middle of the yeah, it's like the one day he does two fifteen. I know that feeling well. I feel like there's being <laughs> houses being built one foot from my house at all times. <laughs> how many? How much space is there left? Um, so I think that we will definitely use more production in the future, especially after Mass Singer, because as long as there's harmony, as long as there's emotion being conveyed in the music then it really achieves what pentatonics does. And I think like the gimmick of, wow, they can do it with only their voices it is special, but it really in the end is about the emotion and, and conveying the message of the song. And I think that Creep would have been impressive with no instruments, but I think the production plus our harmony and vocal stuff, what we do, I think together it really created that intensity that like communicated those very sad lyrics that Creep has. And so I think that, yeah, there's a whole nother world we can explore and I'm sure, I'm sure we will. That's cool. Yeah, because you're just getting started. I mean, you just, gotta, you just got to walk a fame. So, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. <just> begun. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, so on the tour front, um, what kind of things can we expect from that? How excited are you for, I mean, the, this is probably what the 50th tour that you've done probably at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly am so pumped for this tour. I think it's very different from other tours. One, the intro to the show is just this long, dramatic Beyonce I Am Tour intro. It's like giving you drama. Okay. And I'm so excited about that. That's one of my favorite parts of the show. And then I love that we get through a lot of stuff quickly. Like we do like a lot of the lucky ones um, and we do all the stuff people want to hear. You're going to get Daft Punk, you're going to get Hallelujah. And like it also, we have, we have a little bit of production throughout that, we did in Europe and Asia and New Zealand and Australia. And it's just like those moments we were scared of because we were like, I don't know if people are going to want to dance break with just production, but it really gets the crowd hype. And so it was fun for us to be able to put on a show in another way. There's still so much acapella, but like we've never been able to really dance on stage because with acapella, you need so much breast support. So now to have little moments where we can just like put the mic down and be free it's really, really cool. And I feel like Dua Lipa up there or something. Oh, not Dua Lipa. Oh my gosh. I wish you guys were coming to San Diego, but you are coming to Irvine. So that is close enough. Maybe sure I can enough. bring into that show. and Definitely come. I will. <laughs> yeah, I have to see that. Um, <clears throat> does little Eliana get to join on this tour? Little baby Eliana? <laughs> She'll be there. She's been on the tour. She went all to Europe and Asia and I oh. cannot believe a perfect baby she is. She just like is always laughing and smiling and she loves everyone. And she's more cultured than me at age zero. And, <laughs> and she's literally the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. Her eyes, I always talk about them with Kirsty. I'm like, her eyes. Oh, uh, that is so yeah. cute. And Kirsten's getting married too soon, yeah? Yes, she is. Did you do little planning together for the weddings? <laughs> no, but I feel like I, not yet, but I've learned, I have like sent her ideas because... I'm on such a wedding high. I just like don't want to stop. And um, I've like, well, I just accidentally played piano. And I, uh, I've been telling her like, if you need any advice or you want any ideas or want to do a brainstorm, I'm here. But I also don't introduce it. That's her wedding. But I'm like, I've got so many ideas. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, well, I mean, after the tour, we just said, you know, you've got the greatest hits holiday coming, the holiday album coming out after that. There's going to be a couple of new songs on there as well as some covers. Um, do you have anything after that planned or the future is kind of up in the air from there or? Yeah, we have, we have, um, a bunch of really exciting things planned for the next couple of years. Actually, we have like a, a, like a nice little outline of what's to come um but obviously it shifts all the time uh, based on everyone's schedules and but i uh i'm really excited for the direction we're taking and for there's a couple particular projects that are really really big ideas that we've been developing over a long time that are really starting to pick up steam that i'm excited about um, but it's a lot of new music and it's a lot of risk taking and it's gonna, I think it's going to be a beautiful couple of years for Pentatonics. I love that. Yeah. I'm excited to watch it unfold. I mean, I've been a fan since the start, so it's been fun to watch you 
for the last, I mean, 10, 12 years that it's been already. So I'm excited to see where you all go. And I'm just, I'm really appreciative that you did take this time to talk to me. This was really exciting. Of course. No, thank you for having me. This was so fun. And is there anything else that you want the fans or anyone to know or anything else you want to say before? Oh, well, uh, this just happened. So it's on the top of my mind. But I just released a video um, for the song on my EP called Four. Okay. And it video incorporates a lot of wedding footage. It came out like 20 minutes ago. Oh, and, uh, wow. Super I, <laughs> I sob every single time I watch it. And um, so if anyone is in the mood to cry. Okay. Well, but happy yeah. tears. Oh, happy <laughs> tears. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, Scott, thank you so much. Um, I wish you such good mm. luck on this tour and the albums and everything <laughs> else that you've got coming on. And I mean, best of luck with you and Mark as well. Um, mm. I'm, I'm so happy for you and so happy for the band. And I uh, wish you many more years of continued success. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. And thanks for having me and down to talk anytime. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, Andrew. Bye. Bye. And